I know I could start pretty much any sentence like this, but I was looking at some chips merchandise the other day, more specifically some Viewmaster discs, and it got me thinking, what the hell happened to like Viewmaster in? I haven't heard hardly anybody mention it, I don't really see it in the shops anymore, and it got me thinking with noting them Viewmaster discs. Oh, I don't mind being able to look at them. So I had a quick look around some of the stalls and chad shops and I couldn't see a Viewmaster. And then luckily, I actually found that I'd got one. I was like, oh, what well, is all, you know, coming up roses as it were. And it got me thinking about a lot of the history of Viewmaster and like sort of my personal memories of it. And uh, starting off with something that, like I say, is very personal to me. And I can't believe this actually happened, but it's a really strong memory. As my sister used to be the manager of the local Woolworths. And one night I was in there as the shop was closing. So that was cool in and of itself. And for some reason, I remember, this is a bit of an aside, but they were selling these giant Mr. T's that were about this big. And I eventually got one of them, God, what spoiled kid out. I told you what I was gonna do to you next time you try to take one airplane, didn't I? I remember my sister saying, oh, they got these few masters in stock and they were these nice presentation boxes. And they were like, almost looked like, you know, about yay, yay big. And one of them was night riding. And one of them was wind in the willows. And I can't believe I'm saying this. This is so out of character for me. But my sister said, choose one. And I chose the wind in the willows one. I think even my sister was like, why have you put that? But something about these Viewmaster discs. There I think, it's a shame that everything's gone digital. And in a way, that I'll come back to Viewmaster as well. But when you actually look through a Viewmaster, and it's like, actually it works pretty good here because of all the, uh, all the sunlight. I expect to look through to see Starship Pet or something. But you get such a, a nice texture with it. Like now, I think, because so many things are digital and you're so used to just seeing things like on YouTube and on your phone and all that kind of stuff. You kind of forget sometimes just how good the 3D was in old things. And talking about old, they actually started in 1939 and they were actually aimed at like adults. Hey, I'm in New York City. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. What's going on here? Same like sort of, you know, showing far from places that you never go to like France or Egypt or something. You know, like a tourist thing. And I always forget like how old color film is and, and 3D. So I still always think of 3D as being relatively recent. And even like the very first 3D craze, I always think all oh, the 50s, but that started in like the 30s. Uh, I always like to put a question, but uh, which Viewmaster reels did you have? The very last thing that I can remember at Viewmaster was it came in like, uh, almost like uh, the, the, was it Google Cardboard thing, like a box, and you could slide your mobile phone into it and use that like a Viewmaster. So that was sort of one of the more recent interpretations of Viewmaster. I think it was uh, 2015 when that came out. Viewmaster virtual reality, combined with your smartphone and view what's possible. I had a belated birthday present. It was one of my favorite books of all time, Mountain Survival, Choose Your Own Adventure books. And when I became first aware of this, this specific one was in Weetabix. And one thing that was great years ago, the free gifts for cereal used to, 99% of the time, always be in the cereal. But with this particular one, you actually actually collect tokens. And I usually think, oh, when I was a kid growing up, it was like, and a load of computers were coming in and loads of technology was really cool. Can you imagine saying to a kid nowadays, you've got to save tokens to send off for something. And that thing is a book. I mean, that's just crazy talk. What the heck is that? Look at the start of this book, actually, it says. Warning, do not read this book straight through from beginning to end. And I've took that warning to nearly every book I've ever read. But, yeah, because this is a choose your own adventure book, a bit like, you know, the fighting fantasy books and things like that, is that you could pick where you wanted the main character to go. And I, honest to God, I don't think on any game ever, I've ever died so much. But spoiler alert, you can die so many ways in this book. I fell off cliffs, I've been chased by bears. I even once fell into water and it said, do you want to warm yourself by the fire? And I was like, damn right I do. Warm yourself up by the fire, <laughs> died. 
to, to, to like <laughs> bad luck Brian, but uh, if you can get this book, I highly recommend it. And uh, as always, keep it locked. Thanks for watching The Legends of Cherry Hill. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Ah!